Canto 5, Second Circle, Lust. Dante and Virgil enter the second circle, those who lacked self-control, and it's here the punishments really begin. The way is blocked by Minos, who in life was the king of Crete, who judges the dead and sends those who willingly sinned to the appropriate lower circles. Virgil rebukes Minos and the travellers continue. The second circle is populated with those who were overcome with lust. These souls are battered by a continuing violent storm. This symbolises the power of lust as the sinners now drift as ever as a consequence of being overwhelmed by their passions in life. Lust is not completely self-centred and it is accordingly punished relatively mildly. In this circle, Dante sees Semiramis, the Assyrian queen, Dido, the queen of Carthage, Cleopatra, Helen of Troy, Paris, Achilles, Tristan of Tristan and Isolde and many others who were overcome by sexual love during their life. Many rulers are found to be lustful. One wonders could Dante have survived a political statement of putting rulers in the lower circles of hell? Dante meets Francesca da Rimini who married a deformed man for political purposes and advantage, but then had an affair with his younger brother, Paolo. Giovanni found Francesca and Paolo together and slaughtered them both. In Francesca's own words, love took me so strongly that we are now one in hell. Giovanni Boccaccio was inspired by Dante and wrote the Decameron, a 14th century set of short stories in the vein of the Canterbury Tales. At this point, Dante, overcome by pity and anguish, promptly faints. Canto 6, Third Circle, Gluttony. The gluttonous wallow in a rotting slush caused by a continual putrid, icy rain. Cerberus, a hound of Hades, also known as the Great Worm, is a three-headed beast of hell who guards the gluttons lying in the freezing mire, mauling and injuring them with his claws as they howl in pain. Virgil secures safe passage by filling each of the monster's three mouths with mud. Dante talks with a gluttonous Florentine contemporary, Chacco, who also appears in the Decameron by Boccaccio. This man is described as the most gluttonous man who ever lived. Chacco speaks to Dante regarding tension in Florence between the white and black Guelphs. Chacco predicts the expulsion of the white Guelphs, Dante's political party, from Florence by the black Guelphs. Guelphs, aided by Pope Boniface VIII. This caused Dante's long exile from the city, but as this poem is set in 1300, the events leading up to the poet's eventual exile in 1302 have not yet taken place. Guelphs supported the Pope and the Ghibellines supported the Holy Roman Emperor. References to them both reflect the tension between the very political Vatican and the Holy Roman Emperor in those times. Canto 7, Fourth Circle, Greed. The Fourth Circle is guarded by Plutus, the Greek god of wealth. He threatens the pair, but Virgil protects Dante. The fourth circle holds the greedy or miserly, 
in terms of material possessions at least, including shockingly for the time many clergymen, popes and cardinals. The sinners here joust using great weights as weapons as they push with their chests against each other. Fifth Circle, Wrath. The sinners fight each other in the rancid, swampy waters of the River Styx. The actively wrathful fight each other on the surface, while the passively wrathful lie choking beneath the water. Quote, Into a black sulkiness which can find no joy in God or man or the universe. Canto 8 Crossing the Styx. Phlegias reluctantly transports Dante and Virgil across the Styx in his skiff. On the way, they are accosted by Filippo Argenti, a black Guelph from the prominent Adimari family. It is believed there was a personal incident between Argenti and Dante where Argenti enabled the seizing of Dante's property when Dante was sent to exile. Consequently, Argenti is seized by the other wrathful souls. Quote Dante, In weeping and in grieving, a cursed spirit, may you long remain. Already Dante is beginning to demonstrate he is starting to reflect on his own actions and his own sins. Entrance to the city of Dis. Dante perceives high towers that resemble fiery red mosques. Virgil explains this is actually the city of Dis. Dis is surrounded by a marsh and leads to the lower circles of hell. Dis is also one of the names of Pluto, the classical king of the underworld. The walls of Dis are guarded by fallen angels. Virgil is unable to convince the fallen angels to let him and Dante into the city of Dis. Canto 9 The Furies Dante is threatened by the Furies. These are female entities of vengeance in Greek mythology. Alecto punishes moral crimes. Megaera punishes breaches of trust. And Tisiphone punishes violence. And finally Medusa can turn people to stone. An angel from heaven touches the gate with a wand, allowing the poets to proceed. Using allegory, the poem is beginning to deal with sins that philosophy and humanism do not fully understand. Virgil explains to Dante how Erector, a legendary witch, sent him down to the lowest circle of hell to bring back a spirit from there. Canto 10, Sixth Circle, Heresy. Here, things get very interesting. Heretics like Epicurus, the Greek philosopher, and his followers are ablaze in their own tombs. Dante talks with the Epicurean Florentine Farinata degli Uberti, a famous Ghibelline leader. Farinata strongly protested the proposed destruction of Florence at the meeting of the victorious Ghibellines. He died in 1264 and was posthumously condemned for heresy in 1283. Dante talks to Cavalcante de Cavalcanti, a Guelph who is the father of Dante's friend and fellow poet Guido Cavalcanti, a 
about Florentine politics. Farinata explains that souls in hell can see into the future and now better understand life and the consequences of actions in life. Farinata states that a number of people are packed into the same tomb, including Emperor Frederick II, who was Holy Roman Emperor and King of Jerusalem. He was labelled a pagan and a, a religious sceptic, and was also labelled an antichrist by Pope Gregory IX. In the same tomb was also Ottaviano degli Ubaldini, who worked as a Guelph against Emperor Frederick II on behalf of the Pope, who was quoted as saying, I can say, if I had a soul, I lost it for the Ghibellines.